All right, I want us to look at exponential exponential and, and logarithmic equations. So as you can tell from the title, we're going to be talking about equations that have exponentials and logarithms, and we have to find a way to kind of cancel those guys out. Now here's one of the, the coolest things that we have. If x, y, and a are positive, and a does not equal 1, then here's what we can do. So all the variables I'm talking about have to be positive, and that a cannot equal 1. Then x equals a means that you can do log with a base a. A or y. What did I say? Right, x equals y means that log with the base a of x is equal to log with the base a of y. This, this is very akin to the things we've seen before, like with the power property. You raise both sides of the equation to the same power, you're going to be able to do more stuff, right? You take the square root of both sides, of course, you know, well, other things have to worry about with the square root property. But this is basically saying if you can take the log of both sides. Isn't that exciting? You don't see it. You don't care. Let me, let me show you why this is exciting. Remember when I said we, we, ca we could have equations like this, 5 to the x equals 7? I can give this to you on your final exam and say, solve this. Can you solve this without a calculator? No, yes, since everybody said nothing. 5 to the what power gives you 7? Do 5 and 7 have a common base? No. So I can't do all the stuff that I did for the last test. But here's what I can do. I can use this, this statement up here, and I can take the log of both sides. That means I can say that the log of... 5x is equal to the log of 7. Okay. I basically took the log of both sides. And let me show you why this is useful. One of the properties that we had with logarithms was that when you have a power inside of the log, what can you do with that power? Recall that when you have log of x to the r, you can write that as r times log of x. So how is that useful to me in this problem? I can write this as x times log of 5 is equal to the log of 7. Please understand something right here. Log of 5 is a number. It's not a pretty number, but it is a number. You can type this into your calculator any day of the week, and it's going to give you the same number. Log of 7 is just a number, right? If I'd written pi, pi is just a number, right? Is pi pretty? It's not pretty. He's what we call transcendental. I think no. Is that right? Anyway, he's, he's irrational. He's a pi super... Do pi and e ever have a connection? Yes. Um, for those of you who are connected to the internet, so you can take the check log this seven, out. Divide it by the you want to check out Euler's formula. Right? Uh, sorry. Check out Euler's formula, and you're going to see a connection between pi and e. So here, to get x by itself, divide by log of 5, right? Into the log of x. No, just, just divide both sides by, log, log of 5 is just a number, so if I divide both sides by that, I can get x by 7. It's like if I had 3x equals whatever, divide both sides by 3. Log of 5, remember, is just a number. That's why I'm canceling it out over here. Log of 5, again, is a number. 
do, do not try to cancel do you, logs. Do you want that written like that? I mean, what are you looking for? I'm wanting the, the answer. So the log of 7 over log of 5 is an exact answer. Yes, it is. Okay. So x is equal to log of 7 over log of 5. This answer is exact, but a lot of times you're going to see that they want you to convert this and give an approximate answer. So that means you just type it into the, the calculator. What is log of 7 divided by the log of 5? Approximately 1.209. 1.209. <coughs> All right. So we're always going to try and get it into that form where log is over log? No, not necessarily, because things are going to be written very crazily. Your job is to get x by itself. My problem here is that x was in the exponent, right? Mm -hmm. The way I get x out of the exponent is by applying log to both sides. Because when I do that, this exponent gets multiplied in front because of the property that I had with logs from before. Okay, so you don't have to, since you have log over log, you don't have to do the whole log minus log, right? Because we don't have common this is not This is not fit into that property where you would do log minus log because that would be log with a fraction inside of the log. This is the quotient of logs, not the log of a quotient. It's a good question. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So this is your exact answer, and this is your approximate answer, your approximation. OK. Now let's see how things get a little bit more uh, challenging than this.